So, I have to confess something, guys. I have to confess something. First up, I did I did um all of the side quests from version 2.0. Uh, for example, the Tizo Sick uh, Two. It's not three, but two. Um, I helped her. The story was interesting. Basically, um, she's been called by many in Pelicone and mostly the Golden Hour as the Emperor. Uh, yeah, the Emperor. Um, like Queen or something, because uh, she made so many good deeds to people uh, around town, I suppose. But in real life, in reality, she was a tyrant in her original world. And um, basically what she was uh, doing was some, uh, well, unlawful uh, events that uh, caused many people to lose their lives or be executed or uh, sent to jail. And we helped her, and um, with that, I think that this, I mean, she has stood trial, and uh, I suppose that uh, now, well, uh, this is uh, the next in line. Not in the sense that she's, well, she'll be a tyrant, no, but she will um, definitely be a uh, Someone that should uphold the kindness towards others, as the last one did. Uh, kindness should be paid forward um, to the dear citizens of Penacroni. This is a group message sent to everyone the late emperor's phone contacts. Late emperors, yeah. The late emperor ruled in the land of dreams for many years, governing with virtue and earning the love of the people. However, Due to reasons in the real world, she had no choice but to educate the throne to me, having me fulfill her unrealized ambitions. The Tizoshits how do we spell how do you how do we say that even? Uh the Tizoshi Shis my other dynasty will bear witness of a generation, passing down its legacy, and uh, continue to watch over its people until the end of time. If there are urgent matters that require help, please do not bear it alone and contact me. Also, to facilitate my subjects who have been unable to enter their dreams due to uh, various circumstances, I will establish an uh, I will establish an administrative office at the Reverie Hotel in the real world. If there are important matters to discuss, please leave your dream and seek me out. Second Emperor of the Theosish Dynasty, Theosish Spree. Of the third. So yeah. Um I want to go back I don't even know if it's this possible yeah, it is. Okay, good. Um so as for the sound of the and the fury. So I've been able to uh, off stream, obviously. I wasn't able to do so live because, you know, circumstances. Also I didn't know that I was going to um well <laughs> to basically uh, start this uh, companion quest as soon as I had, I suppose. But yeah, Masquerade Duet, basically, yeah, as you can see from uh, the thumbnail, yeah, it is related to Sparkle. So, it was a um, detective story, uh, which relied on a murder case, and... It was funny. Uh, we it was a dream bubble in which you had Black Swan and Sample investigating uh, a crime, where Black Swan thought that uh, Sample was Sparkle in disguise, but in fact uh, it was not the case. It was just uh, one of the many tricks made by the masked fools, and most specifically Sparkle, obviously. Um, envision a rose forthcoming. Let's just see this. All of these side quests here, Trust Me Star, Truth of Peace, 
Princesses Rare and Envision the Rose forthcoming, uh, were uh, Clutchy's uh, tuning missions. Let's just say that. In the first one, Envision the Rose forthcoming, um, you had um, someone who had a dream, and that dream was to be able to to sing. To sing, but she unfortunately uh, went through many obstacles. Uh, her parents didn't want her to uh, do something unfruitful and uh, thought that singing was not something that would uh, be uh, sustainable to her and her possible future family. Um, as well, and also, uh, when I say obstacles, I also mean uh, her classmates. Uh, I don't know. Her teacher, her teacher wasn't wasn't that uh, well, denying to the fact that she was that her dream was was possible or not. No, she was convinced that um, this woman will be able to to make her dream come true. And um, and uh, yeah. So in the end, when um, she thought that everyone was against her and uh, her last array of hope ray of hope rather was her boyfriend I suppose but um, he lost a gamble he lost a gamble uh, in a match it seems and he went away he wa he asked one of his friends or I don't know someone close to him to relay, a, to relay a message to her to say that uh, he was not going to be able to fulfill his end uh, to promise and yeah uh, she threw away uh, the tickets related to the match that she was supposed to see and um, she thought that she had no one and she was prepared to she was really prepared to uh, Well, to commit suicide, let's just say that. And uh, yeah, it, it was really uh, painful to watch. To be honest. Obviously, we, as the trailblazer or the trash blazer, I don't know, it depends. And as uh, someone who likes to make people uh, see the reason and see them happy, well, um. We saved her. We didn't. We didn't let her uh, do what she wanted, and we we hold her hand. We grasped it. We grasped it tightly. With that, uh, I think she was she fell in some sort of love with us. I don't know about that too much, but um, we made her realize by making her sing um, in. Um, well, near um, the slot machines um, in the golden hour, uh, we made her sing there, and she attracted people. She was afraid that her singing wasn't that good. Uh, yeah, it was. It was really good. I mean, we don't hear we don't hear her sing, but since she attracted people, it sure is. Supposedly, that be good, yeah. Also, um, I have to remember. So yeah, uh, so this was uh, Envision a Rose forthcoming. Really, really emotional quest. To be honest, um, you clearly see the emotions that she's going through. Trocona, yeah, that's her name. Uh, yeah. And I think that Envision of Rose forthcoming. This is her song. This is her. This is her song. Yeah. So that was Envision of Rose forthcoming. Really? Yeah. That was a really good quest, to be honest. Oh, I mean, uh, clutchy quest. I should. I think I should call it that. Uh, as for goodness is rare. So as you may have seen from the message that we received. Um. Well, Tizoshi's. Sitch, Tizochich, I don't know. 
uh, well, her, this one that you see here, um, has no choice but to wake up from the dream, confronting her own sins and punishment. It seems that even within the dreamscape, there, were, there comes a day when one must inevitably wake up. So, yeah, she had to confront the reality about what she's done in the real world and, and her kingdom. And we saw through her, mem her memories um, and her emotions, obviously, uh, what she has done to her people. And these were some object things. And as her Grey Knight, we had to well, side with her. I mean, barely. I mean, merely side with her. And there were some cases where, where um, there were some fugitives to the law of her kingdom. And uh, she, we, as from the goodness of our hearts, let them uh, flee, right? But um, she saw us as a threat and wanted to get rid of us. But uh, this obviously was just her memories, so we had to wake up. I mean, wake up from her memories. To then um, see the truth for what it was, and uh, she had to make a she she had to make a choice, and her choice was to go back to her kingdom in the real world and face punishment for what she did. And as you saw, she um, abdicated, and a new emperor took the throne, basically. But yeah, this one was good. Um, if I had to, to make a top, okay, I, I don't want to make a, uh, a top four or whatever. I don't know, I don't want to, to do that because all of these are special in their own, uh, on their own accord. Um, but yeah, I think each one of them, each one of these clocky quests relies on some kind of emotion, a specific emotion, a strong and vivid emotion that lies buried within uh, the soul's core, or brain, or memories, or whatever. And that really was uh, surprising. There's so many, so many layers to a human being a human or any kind of um, person um, due to how deep their emotions lie and how far they have to go to somehow some way conceal those emotions and sometimes it seems like the the family is trying to conceal the, these memories as well and that's is a good segue for the trees of peace. Let me, let me just read this text here. So we have someone called uh, called uh, Calderon Chadwick, who was once a brilliant scientist. However, the imaginary implosion pulse he developed led to the loss of homes and lives for innumerable individuals. He spent the remainder of his life yearning for redemption, and it took several centuries after his physical demise for him to find the rightful place he deserved. Yeah. So, Dr. Calderon Chadwick is one of the members of the Genius Society. This quest, this quest, yeah, was also a way to well, add some characters that uh, we haven't seen in right in time, I'd say. And when I am, who are these characters, you may ask? Well, Strulum and Herta. Although, you know, 
the uh, seclusion zone was a thing, but still. Yeah, this was uh, this was crazy. This quest here, I think, was had the mo the, the most ramifications because um, there was a point when uh, we had as uh, some someone from uh, I suppose the IPC. Uh, we had to. Um, Push the button, let's say, to end all lives due to the uh, implosion pulse, the imaginary implosion, implosion pulse. But uh, I didn't accept anything, and I was uh, pushed back to the to the entrance, to the to the zone where I had to push the button. So I knew that when even when I did didn't accept the outcome, I had to push the button either way, and. Yeah. In the end, um, Chadwick, I think, closed, uh, asked Scrullum, a friend of his, to give him some pills, I think, uh, so that he may be able to uh, to close his memories, so that no one would be able to get the formulas related to this imaginary implosion pulse because this would be um, a weapon of destruction let's just say that and there are so many things that he didn't even mention that could be problematic as well so um, the the IPC and so and by extension now there's also the family involved um, they kept him I mean somewhat alive it was just a bubble at this point but he retained the memories um, and he he, li he lived somewhat of a life I suppose in Panacone the golden hour that was enough we had to make him remember and the uh, Strulum helped us for this endeavor and um yeah it was really interesting to say the least um, also, the one emotional part, even though, you know, Genius Society members are what they are, we went back uh, in the end to the seclusion zone, and there was some type of funeral for Dr. Chaldron Chadwick, and he also transferred his memories and all the formulas to Herta. So now, Herta has all of uh, Chadwick's uh, information, formulas, and uh, scientific research so that uh, she can keep it within her and not let it divulge and make the same, same mistake as Chadwick has done in the past due to the fact that he obliterated the um, planets and yeah. That was that, that was super interesting. I like the fact that we get some more information on the Eugenia Society for that. But yeah, that was the trees at the trees at peace. And as for the final one, Cosmic Star. This one was in reference to a superstar, it seems, an actor named Leslie Dean. And when you when I read to you this text here, you will I think you'll understand. The figure of the prematurely departed classmate superstar Leslie Dean has reappeared at the golden hour. However, he is not a real individual, but an illusion formed by numerous inseparable thoughts. In a dreamscape, this illusion continuously seeks evidence of its own existence. In and of itself, um, this story tells about um, this so-called superstar, uh, cosmic superstar Leslie Dean, who died in a cosmic accident. Uh, 
well, a long, I mean, it seems like a long time ago. But several fans of his came together and formed uh, some sort of hive mind um, due to their memories and thoughts about him uh, in order to recreate in the dream a cognitive existence of uh, Leslie Dean. But th this one had no clue about what was going on. He thought he was the real deal. But as it turns out, it seems like, well, he had uh, the reveal of the fact that he was not the real deal. <laughs> and uh, he had to, well, to understand it the hard way, I suppose. For the fact that we were able to uh, see everyone that, I mean, yeah, I suppose everyone that uh, helped in creating him uh, with the collaboration of the family. Oh, I think it was the family or the IPC, Evil One or Or. And, yeah, they were trying. There was also this uh, assistant to, to Leslie Dean, who was infatuated with him. And he did not notice anything. I mean, the one who died, not this one, obviously. And now that he saw that, I mean, he was able to, to well, reciprocate the feelings to these to this assistant. And but uh, unfortunately, even though their love was real was too late as even though he claimed that um, he finally understood what it means to exist and uh, he was happy that he could be able to recognize who he was really well he disappeared he, he disappeared because there was no longer any recollection of him in the dreamscape so he had to let go but yeah, these were all of these, I mean, all of these side quests, these were all amazing. I had quite a lot of fun and obviously you know, pure emotions, regard, I mean, regarding all these plenty quests and um, yeah, how they, they were amazing, I can only say that I suppose. As for this one. Companion quest, yeah, this was a uh, this was crazy. Oh, I haven't I haven't read this one. Sorry. Um, in the memories left behind by Black Swan, you experience deeply Miss Sparkle's detective theater. Lest not to nitpick all at the intricacies of the plan you, she thought so hard to come up with, lest her chain her chain knocks on your doors at unexpected times. Yeah. She wants to. She also wants to. Um, uh, to get back to her dream bubble that the Black Swan had. Yeah, I guess we'll see. 